When I started this project, my youngest was still in nursery school and he's just started secondary school. It has been a long journey and there were times when I thought the project would not get finished. It really has had everything thrown at it, even a pandemic. There are far too many people to thank. I'd be here all day, but there are a few I'd like to give a special mention to. There are two people that believed in me and this project from the outset and have supported me all the way through, and that's Jamie Nesbitt and Martin Holland. They came with me to the National Lottery Heritage Fund where I first presented the ideas. Thankfully, they liked the project and the rest is history, as they say. My thanks to Philippa Davies, my project advisor at the Southwest Lottery Office for guiding me through this process. I couldn't have progressed the project without the much funding required. And here, the support of the Friends of Carini Museum has been invaluable. In particular, I'd like to thank Earl Bathurst for leading the fundraising campaign, alongside Kevin Ronaldson, Tony Berry, John Birch, and Edward Alsop. I'd also like to thank the Winstone Trust, whose initial funding made it possible to start the project. My sincere thanks to Andrew Ives for attending all the project meetings and making himself available to be a sounding board. This project simply wouldn't be the success it is without the museum team's knowledge, expertise, sheer hard work and determination. Everyone has played their part in this project, staff and volunteers alike, and I would like to thank you all for your contribution to the incredible end result. In particular, I'd like to thank Emma Stewart for leading on the activity plan and for bringing me back down to earth when things were going awry. Alison Brooks for leading on the collections work and her attention to detail, making sure nothing was missed. Isabel Milne for leading on the commercial plan and keeping the income coming in, even when we close sections of the museum. Sarah Lewis for leading on the digital elements and for always coming up with new ways of working. Jane Bovenizer, Rebecca Schallenberger and Valia Evolds for their educational input. Caroline Morris and James Harris for their collections input and Heather Dawson for her work as volunteer coordinator. And to Chris and Jeannie, who had the hardest job of all in keeping the unrelenting dust at bay. I'd like to thank all the contractors who made up the project team. I'd also like to express my thanks to Cotswold District Council and the officers that have been directly involved in the project and have supported me in delivering it. In particular, Louise Thomas for being the project accountant and for all the hours she has contributed to make sure everything balanced. And Andrew Dyke for his time spent on building related issues. Thank you to the leader of the council, Joe Harris, for supporting the completion of this project, particularly at such a difficult time. And to councillor Jenny Ford for being a driving force behind me, the museum, and for wanting to see the project succeed. Last but not least, thank you to my husband and children who have been on this journey with me for the last six years. I had a vision to ensure the museum is in the best possible place, to be an award-winning attraction, a community hub and centre for learning, and to help drive the economic development of the area. Stone Age to Carinium creates a museum that is relevant to today's communities, maximising on the building spaces, enhancing the visitor journey through reinterpretation and improved access, and working with new partners to bring a vibrant programme of archaeology related events and activities. Thank you to you all. The end result exceeds all my expectations.